do welcome everyone. It's good to see all who are with us. We welcome you this morning on this day, November 17th. We have about, I don't know, a week and a half before Thanksgiving, something like that, huh? You know, so Ginger's going to have a whole bunch of stuff. So if you want to go eat, go eat by Ginger's house. Oh, that's right, you won't be there. That's right, Ginger won't be there. That's right, I'm sorry. That's right. you go at Mindy. Huh? No, you're not going to Mindy. I know where you're going. <laughs> you go with the rest of the family over there across the river. First you got to cross the lake and then you got to cross the river. Oh, well. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's right. But we do welcome each and every one. It's good to see all who are with us. Let's all stand as Al comes and leads us in our call to worship. Hymn number 10, How Great Thou Art. Heavenly Father, we come together this morning 
is we sing a song like this, I pray that each person here truly understands how great you really are. Father, even though we're going through sometimes, it seems like so many trials and tribulations, so many things happening, we know, Father, that you have everything under control. We know, Father, that one day, one day we're going to be with you and there'll be no more pain and no more sorrow because of why how great you are. Take charge of your service this morning. Be with those that aren't able to be with us. We know we have some that are, are traveling and probably have some that are working. Let, let them know that they are in our prayers. They are in our minds. Thank you, Lord. In our son's precious name we pray. Amen. Again, we do welcome everyone. It's good to see all who are with us here. And we uh, glad to see uh, some of Ginger's clan here, her people are here. Did I say it right, Ginger? I so. That's my, my friends and family. That's your people, right? Yeah, that's my people. Okay, that's right. It's a posse. <laughs> yeah, that's my posse. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, David? All right. How are things in Baton Rouge? <laughs> but it's good to see y'all, good to see everybody that is here this morning. In a way of announcement, be aware of things that are taking place and are happening, of course, today. Hopefully, uh, everyone, I hope, will stay as we have our banquet back in the kitchen, a lot of food, so please stay today as we have our banquet. Uh, no school in St. Tammany Parish for the week of Thanksgiving, not this week coming, but the following week, the 25th through the 29th, Monday through Friday, so they still got another week of school before that. On the 27th, there will not be a Wednesday night service, that's the day before Thanksgiving, so be aware of that for those who do come on Wednesday night. Um, of course, and Thanksgiving is the 28th this time around, so the last Thursday in um, November. Um, the 20th of December is a half a day here in St. Tammany Parish, the end of the second nine weeks, so be aware of that. And then, of course, the Christmas holiday at the end of December from the 23rd all the way into the new year of January, the new year. Boy, can, you can you imagine? We say already thinking about 2020. Unbelievable how fast time just goes and here we are. Uh, in the front here, in the, on the front pew, there is a box next to the calendars. There's a bunch of oranges in there. Take some home. It's from Mr. Larry, Miss Nancy. Appreciate it. From uh, Mr. Larry. Okay. Okay. So anyhow, but anyhow, take whatever you want home. They got some there. Uh, if you have to arm wrestle, go ahead and you can, you can do that. But appreciate that. Thank you for that. But uh, so for those of you who want that, there are also calendars for sale, five dollars each for those who would like to purchase calendars. Also, let me remind you this week as well. We have some people who's having birthdays. Again, just to remind you of the birthdays. Uh, Sandy uh, Davis's son Zach. He's in Michigan, right? He's having his birthday today. So his birthday is today, so be, be aware of that. Um, Debbie and Johnny's uh, daughter-in-law, Katrina, married to Johnny III, hope I got that right, uh, his birthday is on the 18th. And also Victor Petraeus Sr., his birthday is on the 18th this week. Also this week, um, Zach's mom, Sandy Davis, <laughs> is on the 19th. Of, of the night of this of this uh, of this month, and then the twentieth, we have two people going to have birthdays uh, this coming Wednesday. Both Sandy Dio and and Tinker birthdays on uh, this coming when this coming Wednesday as well. So just be aware of birthdays that are coming up this coming week as well. So we want to wish all those here who are having a birthday this week. Happy birthday to each and every one, and I hope your birthday is really, really good. Uh, you can find us on Facebook as well as on YouTube uh, at any time as well. 
Any other announcements or anything else we need to be aware of? Of anything else going on? Yes, ma'am, Miss Blender. I have ornaments that I'm bringing to sell. So Today. I have a whole bunch. Yes. I oh, have okay. Have All right. Okay. okay. So if anybody would like to purchase ornaments for your, either for what your table or Christmas tree, right? Christmas tree ornaments. Christmas tree ornaments. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, I see Ms. Glenda, she makes these by hand, is that right? Yes, these are all handmade, so this is not one that's stored and resold. This is made specifically by Glenda. And Richard. And, okay, and Richard. Okay. <laughs> he hasn't thought it out. <laughs> <laughs> so if you'd like to purchase some, see Glenda at the end of the service or while we're eating in the back as well. So, be, so, so, so hopefully all that will take place. Again, anything else? If nothing else, Mr. Howell, come and lead us in another hymn. Let us turn to hymn number 387, Blessed Be the Tide. Blessed be the tide. Savior. As the election now is all official and over with, let us pray for the newly elected officials throughout St. Tammany and Louisiana as well. I know some have been reelected, and then we have others that are going to be new coming up as far as going to take office. But pray for all who are. Uh, under, uh, in that authority and pray for God's will, for God's help and leadership in their lives and what they do. Pray for the people out west as they still deal with the fires throughout different places through California and other places out west as well. Remember them and what they are dealing with. Johnny and Debbie Garrett, I think, will be coming back tomorrow from Kentucky, so uh, prayers for them and what they, traveling mercies, as they will be coming back from Kentucky. I'd ask you to pray for Johnny as he continues to uh, get treated for his cancer. Um, there are complications that are taking place uh, as far as with him, so I'd ask you to remember him in prayer, um, the infusions and the other treatments that he's going to be going through and taking place with him. So just remember him and Debbie as well with her 
injuries that she has too. She has some, uh, I think some neck injuries and it affects her arms and her shoulders and stuff. So she has some health issues. So remember both of them in prayer uh, and, to, and, and remember them with their health and what they are dealing with also. Uh, Mr. Billy Lynch's family, Ronnie, Harvey, Dummy, and others as well, but Ronnie, his son, is also is being treated for his cancer, and he too um, is basically having some complications. So I want to remember Ronnie in prayer, as well as the rest. So pray, pray for him and pray for them also as well. Pray for Milton Deal. Milton is having still trouble physically with his back. Is that right, Sandy? So remember him in prayer. Pray for him as well as Sandy. Um, is, did he get any relief at all? A uh, little bit, but the reaction of the medicine, groggy, dizziness. Oh, wow. But uh, okay. it does relieve him so far for a little while, but then it does. And then it comes right back, huh? Yeah, that's the only trouble. When it wears off, you know, it's like, oh, I'm hurting again, so... I'm sorry, but let's remember Milton Deal in prayer and what he is dealing with with his uh, physical problems that he too is dealing with and what's taking place with that. So do, do remember him also in prayer. Other prayer requests, Thanksgiving, concerns, or whatever you would like to share with us. Michael. I have two. So one, I just got an update from my dad. Second, they were saying that they're taking my little brother to the hospital because he has real bad ADHD and they've been trying different medicines. And it seems like when he's on it, he has weird side effects, and the next day if he's not on it, all he does is throw up. And he's getting to a point now where it's just getting worse and worse, and he's not stopping throwing up this morning, so they're taking him to New Orleans. This is your dad? No, my little brother. Your little brother? Yeah. Wow, okay. All right, so remember, remember him in prayer, okay. And second one, my best friend Cody, who's supposed to be the best man in our way, is not going to be there because of work. The military held for an extra two weeks, and he won't be able to come home again until his wedding in uh, May. Really? Oh, I'm sorry. Gee whiz. Gee whiz. Okay, so remember Cody in prayer as well, but especially your brother, though. Remember, remember both of them. Let me show Take it, you got a prayer. Yeah. Yes. I have a really big prayer of Thanksgiving, and... A very special thank you to God's earthly angels. Because I now have a brand new water heater at home. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> That's right. So now I think it's got a, has a brand new water heater. She had it last Monday, so she had it before the cold came in there. So they were able to take hot baths or showers. Oh, yes. And we, we've all taken, I think, more showers than <laughs> we have in the last four months. So, 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 a prayer of thanks, and um, we're glad that uh, you, you were, that, that was able to be provided for you, and that, um, uh, and so, so, prayer of thanks. Good, great. I also have, a, if everybody would keep my granddaughter, Skyla, in prayer. Sure, yes. She had some sort of a seizure Wednesday morning, which okay. was just, it scared the life out of us. She just... She felt sick, went into the bathroom to throw up, and then just hit the floor. Wow. And my son said that her body was like stiff, stiff, and her walk, jaw was locked up. Okay. Yes. So we, we figure it was some sort of a seizure. She wasn't breathing. He managed to get her breathing. She had a heartbeat and a pulse. <coughs> she got her breathing, <coughs> and he rushed her to the emergency room, Karen called the ambulance. And at the emergency room, because she'd been in a psych ward, they don't look at anything but mental. And they said, oh, well, she just passed out from anxiety. Well, my son firmly believes you don't just go into rigor mortis when you pass out. Right. So she's got, she went to her pediatrician. Her pediatrician said they would run all kind of tests. Okay. Epilepsy <laughs> runs on her dad's side of the tail. Okay. So, can you think it may have something to do with that? So she has an appointment with a neurologist. Okay. So okay. just pray that God's hand is in the neurologist's right. wisdom of finding out what yes. went wrong. 
Okay, so we, we just lift up Skylar in prayer. And Skylar is how old again? 13. 13 years old. So remember her in prayer and y'all as well, because I know y'all have anxieties, but just, we'll just pray for the whole situation. Okay, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Other prayer requests? Sandy. Traveling mercy, mercies for my daughter, Rachel. She's in Texas and she's moving back here and she's going to be staying with us until she gets uh, back over here. Okay. Well, when is she coming again? Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. And she's driving a new haul and pulling okay. her car behind it. And she's going to stay with you for how long? Stay with us? Yes. Until she gets a place here and a job here. All right, so remember, y'all in prayer as well as her. She'll go. Yes, absolutely. Miss Linda. Uh, prayers for my sister. <coughs> she had to have gallbladder surgery, and she's recovering right now. Okay. She's not doing very well. She's oh. really, really sick. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So remember her in prayer and forth with that. Yes, okay. Well, she'll go. Sure. And how is um, how Dad doing? Good days and bad days. Good days and Yesterday bad days. Yesterday was a good day. Okay. All right. So, okay. So just keep okay. Why don't you just continue remember your dad and pray and your mom. Remember both of them. Miss Janet. Yeah, I'm going to pray for travel and mercies for my son and daughter-in-law because they have a lot of traveling to do. Yeah. And so they have a lot of traveling to do back and forth over the next couple of weeks. Okay. Now, which son is this? Robbie. Robbie. Okay. All right. So remember him in prayer and traveling mercies for them. We sure will. Yes. Ginger. Um, Frank, I talked. Yes. I invited him to right. the banquet, and uh, apparently that was not doing well. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay. It sounds more to me like he's got the flu and chills and oh, wow. a lot of other things going on. So, okay. Uh, remember him in prayer. Okay. Uh, and also with the rest of my family, my you know, sister, sure. husband, and I, yes. and children, and grandchildren. Okay. And uh, prayer Thanksgiving to have a little deal with David and Lucy. Sure. Yes, yeah, it's good to have them all here, and we do want to continue to remember Mel and Mary rushing, even though we don't see them as much. They're getting up in age, and they do have health issues, as well as many other senior adults as, out as well. Always, in, in conjunction with senior adults, always remember the people in the nursing home. Miss Virginia Hall over at the Lacombe Nursing Home, and Mr. Charles over at Greenbrier. Well, let us remember all of the ones in the nursing homes and pray for them and pray for those who take care of them as well. She sounds like she's doing really well, but Mel's got Yes, yeah, well he's, he's had some health issues I think in the past and I think, uh, you know, a lot of things, yeah, so, yeah, things like, it seems so, yeah, so we remember both of them. Other prayer requests? Yes, Linda. Okay, look at this mama, she's, um, she's very sentimental. <laughs> very emotional. Okay. I don't know why. And yes. Busted at me, of course. And uh, I don't know. I had to sneak out and right. get them to go see if she was okay after I left. Right. She was just very emotional. Right. And it's just that, I don't know, she said that I didn't love her. I know. And then yes. you know, she's always telling me, they said, well, she just misses you. And I said, That's right. well, I understand, but I can't. It's hard to deal with. I know. It's very, very, it's very hard. hard. It is. It is. It is hard. Yes, it is. When I go see her, she's either in the future or the past. Most of the time, it's always in the past, and then sometimes it's the future, but a lot of times it's in the past. You know, and like you said, sometimes she's okay, and then sometimes she's not. She tried to get Amy to. Um, she asked Amy to stay the night with her. Yeah. And he said he wasn't sleeping in the nursing home. <laughs> 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 yeah. Right, I know. Well, I should say she's more in the past than she is anything there. Yeah. yeah, so she's, um, we just lift her up. Yes. Right, she'll yeah. start to like it around there. Oh, her and many others. I mean, it, it's just sad. It, it, it is sad. You know, I mean, because Ginger and Al, they dealt with that and Dolores with their sister. And, you know, when you deal with a person that has dementia slash Alzheimer's, it's, it's the most terrible thing in all the world. Uh, that you have to deal with, and not so much for them, but so much for the, for us, for, you know. Right. Yeah. So. It's like I don't know what's worse, the body to go bad or their mind. That's right. That's it. Yes. They have a lady there that's 95. Right. 
Yes. Right. Aquities. Yes. Right. Right, yes, but I know. I know. And then two seconds after she starts telling, she's about what she was saying, or can't remember the words, and she gets really frustrated. And then yeah. Oh, what I found is we're talking about something now, then she would talk about the past. Yeah. She'll put it all in one. Oh yes. Oh yeah. All together. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So just just remember all the people there, because there are many. Yeah. You know there, and it's just it is sad, but just remember. The families and everybody else involved, we sure will. Yes. Yes. Other prayer requests. Ms. Brandy. Um, for those of you who are unaware, my uncle Barry is in a coma right now. Um, he was in a coma for about a month. Yeah. Um, but he was able to get out of the coma and he was able to get out of the coma and he was able to get out of the coma and he was able to get out of the coma and he was able to get out of the he had a lot, a lot of health issues when he came back from Texas, and they just never got any better at all. Liver, kidney, things that was no longer functioning like they should, and, and different other things were not functioning. And uh, so, um, so now, uh, you just want to remember both of them in prayer. Appreciate it. Thank you for that reminder. Other prayer request? Anyone else? Any? Yeah, just everybody out there working at the plant. Yes. We're close to getting this right because, you know, we have a lot of people who are very sick right now. Um, plus, I have to get all of these good weeks. What's the, what's the time schedule of time? Uh, we're trying to get everybody to ship the stuff so I can put it in the center. Oh, wow. Okay. So everybody's working. Yes. Blues, you name it, yes. Yes. Okay. Sure will. Pray pray for everybody there at work and uh, Renee and him in the back. Remember Renee and uh, what did she too uh, deals with us for with different things and her family in Tennessee. Remember them. Pray for different people in the workplaces now that we are officially in the holiday season. And like at Stennis, even though they don't deal with the public, you have a lot of people that do deal here that are dealing with people in retail, and that it is a very stressful time right now from now until, until after Christmas even, that it's a very stressful time because everybody wants everything now and not yesterday. And, nobody, and, and like you said with, with, uh, with Stennis, when you go over there, nobody has any patience at all. And everybody blames the wrong people when they don't have something or they can't get something. So just pray for the many, many people who are out there working with the public. And we are the public. But, uh, but just pray for those who are working in retail, in different stores, in different places, and, and also the traffic. So traveling mercies for the many who are traveling back and forth to work or just in and around the area. It's going to get even more hectic after Thanksgiving. The closer we get to thank, the closer we get to Christmas. So just pray for each other. Remember each other in prayer. As always, pray for those who do not know the Lord, and for those who do, pray that they will conduct themselves as such that we can represent the Lord in our everyday life as well. And as always, give thanks to the Lord for answered prayer. As you've heard me say, the Lord does answer your prayer. It's either yes, or it's no, or it's wait. We don't like to wait. None of us. Let's face it. We don't like to know. That's right. We don't like to know sometimes. We want... That's right. That's right. But he knows what's best for us. And so, always give thanks to the Lord. Even though we may not like, or we may not think he doesn't answer it, he does. There's always rock, there's always a reason why he allows things to happen or things will happen. 
Always. Always. Nothing he does is not, is not for any reason whatsoever. He has his reason. And sometimes we don't know about it. But give thanks for it. Anyone else? I want to say thank you to everyone here just for being here and coming together to worship the Lord. You know, on Sundays, I think it's, I don't think it is, I know it is, it's good to come together to worship the Lord. And this is why we come together in this building to worship the Lord. It's not just to make us feel good, it does. But we come to worship the Lord. As we say in the bulletin at the top, let us worship the Lord in spirit and truth. And that's what we strive to do. That's why we have this building. So I want to say thanks to the Lord for this building, for what we have. Never take for granted. You know, remember what it was like when we were out of the building for over a year. And now that we've been here. And believe it or not, it's been three years since, we, since the Lord has given us this building. We came in November of 2016. The Lord has done a marvelous work and still is. And just thank Him. When you look around, thank the Lord because it's by His grace and His power that He has done this. So we thank you. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Almighty God, as we come before you now, Lord, we look, we lift up all the prayers that have been mentioned. Lord, you've heard everyone who have voiced concerns and other things that are happening, and even the unspoken prayers. We lift them all up before you, and we pray for your will, for your help, for your grace, and for your mercy. For those that are dealing with different health issues and health problems, some are here, some are on the road, some are in the hospital, some are in the nursing homes, we lift them all up before you, Lord. And we pray for healing, for grace, for mercy, and for your help in the lives of each and every one. For the many that are struggling and going through difficulties at work, at home, and even the battles we have within ourselves, we pray for your grace, for your mercy, and for your help in all of our lives. For the people out west dealing with fires, we pray for them, and we ask for your help and for your grace and mercy and guidance in their lives. For the newly of, of Elected officials in our area, we lift them all up, and even the ones that, that are currently in office, we lift them all up, and we just pray for help in their lives and that they will follow you in all that they do. We pray for those who are not with us this morning for whatever reason. We have quite a few that are out, and we pray for them, and we lift them up, and we are concerned. And we ask that you'll help them and be with them in whatever takes place. We pray for all who are here. And Lord, if there's any here that truly does not know you in their hearts and in their lives, I pray today that they will come to know you. And I pray you'll open their hearts, their eyes, and their ears. May they hear your word. And may you open their hearts to accept it and also if they do not know you, they can come to know you as Lord and Savior of their life today. We pray for the many, many people who do not know Jesus Christ, whomever they may be, a friend, a co-worker, a relative, or even a complete stranger. We pray for salvation. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for what you've done. Again, we lift up all the prayers, all the concerns, and the many things that are going on. And we just ask for your help, for your grace, and for your mercy. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Let us stand as Al comes and leads us in our offertory hymn, 636, We Gather Together. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. He chasten and hasten his will to make known the wicked oppressing. Now see he's from this wrestling. Sing praises to his name. He forgets not 
Bibles this morning, turn if you will to Luke chapter 18 and verses 9 through 14, looking at a parable that Jesus told to the Pharisees of his day, the religious people, and as we can read, because of their own righteousness and how they looked down upon everyone. Now, I know that this parable is about prayer, but it's also about being thankful for what the Lord has done for you and who you are in the Lord. As we come now, you know, this is the fall season. It's cool out there. Uh, leaves are turning. And it feels like Thanksgiving slash even Christmas as well. I know we don't get the snow here. That's just what Ginger wants. She wants snow. I'm sorry, though. Uh, she's just one of the minor. I think many of, many of us... We don't really want any snow. We don't mind the cold weather. We just don't want the snow. Is that right? That's all right. I like all mine. <laughs> <laughs> so we have basically 11 days until we come into the Christmas, I mean the Thanksgiving time, which is November 28, 2019. Now again, if you're familiar probably with this parable, and I really love this, this parable here that Jesus here relates to them about this self-righteous religious person who comes as far as and he's dealing with different things. And again, I know it's about prayer, but it's also about giving thanks to God for his mercy, for his grace, and for what he's done for us as well. Remember, for those of you here who are truly born again, who know Jesus Christ in your heart and your life, remember this. Remember what the Word of God thus says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and in verse 9 and following, and he says, do, do you not know the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral or the idolaters or the adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor those who are thieves or those who are greedy or drunken or slandered or swindlers 
will inherit this. And, and the key here is verse 11 is for us in Corinth, and I'm sure in many other places and even today. And this is what some of you were, past tense. You were these type of people. You were a person who was greedy, a person who was drunken, a person who was a thief, or a homosexual, or a male prostitute, or idolater, or adulterer, whatever the case may be. He says, this is what you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified. How? In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. You see, there were no longer these types of people because the Lord changed them. They are no longer people that could not be trusted. There were no longer people that did some of these terrible things because of their relationship. Now, I say that over and over again. Relationship. You see, religion, it's not just a matter of being a duty. It's a relationship. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. He makes all the difference in the world. And if you truly have a relationship with Jesus, your attitude and everything else will be totally different. You'll be changed. And he says, this is what some of you were. And then he also, in the word of God, it also goes back to 1 Corinthians as well. In verse chapter 1 and 26, he says, brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Now, what is he saying? Think of you when you were saved. When the Lord came into your heart and your life. Think of what you were. I do this continuously. I think always of what I was and how I was and what I did before the Lord even came into my heart and my life. I was a terrible person. Some people say I'm still terrible. That's okay. <laughs> Ter I was terrible. Terrible. And it fear. Guy grew up, grew up in the night ward. You know, it was terrible back then. Tinker knows about that. I think. <laughs> you know, yeah. But think of what you were when the Lord came into your heart and to your life. Think of it. And always remember, this is what I was, but now I am this. This is what I am. I am now a child of God. I am now one belonging to the Lord. And as we come into this time of thanksgiving, give thanks to the Lord if for no other reason that you have a relationship one with the Lord and that he has changed you from the person you were to the person you are now. You see, it's by His power, by His grace, and for His glory. It's an awesome thing. Always remember this. You always have so much to be thankful for. Even if you're going through physical problems, financial problems, or whatever may be going on in your life, family issues, work issues, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. Because you know what? One day we'll stand before the Lord. One day we will be with the Lord. As Al mentioned in his prayer, one day we're going to be with the Lord. There'll be no more pain, no more suffering, no more sorrow, no more retail, no more dealing with the public, no more hustling, bustling, no more worrying about cars going in front of you or whatever the case may be. You know, it's all going to be good. But, the only way that that can happen is that you have had to have a relationship with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Not just intellectually knowing him, but knowing him right here in your heart. And so today, I want us to think, as we're looking at this parable, think about this and look at the parable and and what Jesus here is relating to the religious people. Now, we, in many cases, we are considered religious people, are we not? We come here and people consider us religious people. But now, who are we? Are we like the Pharisee? Or are we like this tax collector? But that's something that you have to answer. And that's something I have to answer. 
And every time you look at that person in the mirror, you're going to have to answer it and say, hey, am I who I'm supposed to be or what I'm supposed to be doing as well? So look at the Pharisee. Look at first of all. Now, again, in verses 9 through 12, look at what took place here. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else, Jesus told this parable. Two men, they went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. Now, yours may have a, a publican. Now, publican is another word back then for tax collectors. So your Bible might have publican. Uh, he wasn't... Um, someone who was elected into anything, not a Republican or Democrat or anything else like that. This was called a publican who was called a tax collector. Okay, so that's another word for it. So he wasn't an official or somebody who was elected into office or anything else like that. But he was one who did have an office and he, he was, by the Roman government, a tax collector who was in basically in office. You could say he was, to our standard today, he's the IRS. But he was worse back then than they, are, than they are today. But there he was. And the Pharisee stood up, and it says, The Pharisee, he stood up, and he prayed about himself to God. God, I thank you that I am not like other men. I'm not a robber. I'm not an evildoer, an adulterer, or even like this terrible tax collector. Lord, look what I do. I fast twice a week. And I give a tenth of all that I get. Now, what kind of prayer is this? I ask you, what kind of prayer is this? A pat on the back. A what? A pat on the back. Right. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, is it? <laughs> I mean, he prayed about himself. Uh, I mean, in his prayer, what is he revealing? What's, what's he doing? He's saying to God, God, look what I have done just for you. I gave you all of this. I gave a tenth. And I could just see the Lord standing there and saying, but you got it all from me in the first place. I gave it all to you. How can you give something back that I gave to you in the first place? You know, everything we have has come from the Lord. Everything. Not just our money, not just our clothes, our health and everything that we have. Everything. You name it. Everything that we have. Even the air that we breathe comes from the Lord. And the most important thing is, the Lord has also given us salvation through his son, Jesus Christ, whom he sent purposely to die on the cross for our sins. Such an awesome God. So here we have this Pharisee. He, he thanks God also that he is not like other men. Now what makes him different from other men? That he is not like other men? His knowledge. <laughs> yeah. That's the consequence. Yes. Yeah. Arrogance. Arrogance. Yeah. Yeah, very arrogant. Lord, I'm glad I'm not like so and so. You know, as far as all that, you know, so, so yeah, I, I don't know, you know, how a person, I mean, but this is an awful prayer, and it's an awful way of giving even thanks to God. He, he gets up and he prays, and God says, I thank you that I am not like other men, you know. I think he needs to be like other men so he can see himself for who he truly is. And he's deluded. Here, he wasn't thanking God for any grace or mercy. Or all he did was thank God for what he himself had done and because of who he was not like. Many people have done this in the past. They have, been, they have compared themselves to other people. Well, I'm glad I'm not like that homeless person, I'm glad I'm not like that other person or this other person or that. But we're all sinners. Every one of us. We're all sinners in need of Jesus Christ. And we all need to humble ourselves. Here we see this man has no humbleness whatsoever. None. What is he relying upon? Himself. Yeah. So he says, Jesus is making this because 
He's confident of his own righteousness. In other words, his own works. What he has done. Lord, look what I have done. I have fasted. I have given a tenth. I can just hear, Lord, I go to church every Sunday, Wednesday, I go here, I do this. No, I, I do, I have these paraphernalia, I, I have these Bible verses, Lord, and I say all these Bible verses every morning and every evening. Lord, look what I do. Yeah, but do you have a relationship with the Lord? And it's quite obvious that this man has nothing. It is sad. Because there are so many people today that are like unto this Pharisee. And the problem is, is their hearts are not right with the Lord. They do not have a relationship. This is not a relationship. This is a man here who is deluded and thinking to himself, I am okay. And yet, he is not okay. He is not okay. You know, to compare yourselves with others is a terrible, terrible thing. You know, Romans chapter 3, and in verse 11, 9 and following, it, here the word of God so declared, what can we conclude then? Are we any better? Now this Pharisee said he was better than the other person. He's not like other people. But here the word of God says, not at all. All already made the choice that Jew and Gentile alike are under sin. There is no one who is righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away and they have together become worthless. And there is no one who does good, no, not even one. You see, so again, I don't know how he can even look at himself and say, Look at my righteousness. Look at all the things I have done. It's impossible. Here, what, what, does not he, what doesn't he pray for? He doesn't pray for repentance. He doesn't pray about his sin. What else doesn't he do? Here, we, he doesn't even pray to God for mercy, for grace, forgiveness. He's not humbling himself at all concerning with anything concerning that of the Lord. All he does is say, Lord, I thank you that I am not like these other people. I am not like them. But we're all in it. We're all there as well. It's sad to hear this prayer of this man who is supposed to be a religious person. And yet, we see no mercy, no grace, no humbleness, no nothing, no humility at all before God. Then we come to the tax collector. The stinking, rotten tax collector. He was looked down upon, and they still are looked down upon today. But they were looked down upon even more back then. They did everything out in public. And here we see it. And so notice this tax collector, or if yours says publican, he says, but the tax collector, he stood at a distance, and he would not even look up to heaven, but he beat his breast and said, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Amazing, isn't it? Here he was, probably standing all the way in the back, not wanting to be seen, not even raising his head, Get, get the idea here. His head is bowed, and he doesn't even want to look up, nor is he looking up to heaven. I could just see the, the Pharisee looking up to heaven and say, God, I thank you, I'm not like this man over here. And here, this tax collector, with his head down, and beating his breast, unable to look to the Lord in heaven. And you notice his prayer? It's not long. It's not elegant. It's very short. And it's to the point. What did he know that the Pharisee didn't know? Humility. Huh? Humility. Humility. But also he knew, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm in need of your mercy and of your grace, as he so relates here in it. He says he couldn't even live. He says, have mercy on me, what? A sinner. 
Not a religious man, not a tax collector, a sinner. You see, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Such an awesome God. Such an awesome prayer. Short and to the point. You see, it's not how long you pray or how much you put into a prayer. It's how you pray. You pray from the heart. You see, he was sincere. He prayed, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. He knew what he was. And he knew what it, what, what it was as well. We, we see this happening here, taking place. Now, again, there are many similarities with the Pharisee and the tax collector, are there not? Both are sinners. Both went to the temple to do what? That's right, they both went to pray. And both were in the same temple. They wasn't in different temples, the tax collector in his place, in his place. Matter of fact, the Pharisee saw this tax collector in this parable and said, I'm glad I'm not like this tax collector. Both of them did pray. And both of them, understand this as well, knew God. They knew about God. They both went to the same temple, to the same place, and they both prayed, but they had a different prayer. One prayed just out of whatever, duty, whatever you may want to call it, or the other one prayed from his heart. And he went to the temple knowing fair good well of who he was and what he was. And there only one asked for mercy. Only one. How does it two? You would think the religious man, the Pharisee, would have said, Lord, you know, I've done some terrible things this past week. Forgive me, help me, be with me. But no mentioning of anything that he had done because he's relying upon his own righteousness and his own things where here we see the tax collector convicted of his own sin convicted to the fact that he knew I've done things I should not have done and now I'm standing before God Almighty you see when we come into God's house we come together to worship God and to speak to Him and to ask for mercy, for grace, and for help. And only one person did this. So look at what happens at the end of all of this. In verse 14, now this is a stunning statement that I think shocked the religious people, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teachers of the law, when Jesus said this, Concerning it. Now remember, he's talking to the Pharisees. He's talking to the religious people because of putting their own faith in their own righteousness, that is their own works, and what they do, and what they need to do, and what they are doing as well. And notice what he says, I tell you this, that this man, which man, the tax collector, rather than the other, the Pharisee, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Such an awesome thing. Again, only one person asked for mercy and grace and sought forgiveness when they came into God's house to pray. And he prayed with a sincere heart. And God saw the sincerity. He saw the humbleness. He saw the one. Now he did see the Pharisee, and he did hear what the Pharisee had to say, but that's as far as it went. Because in the prayer, the Pharisee said no, no thanks to God for all that God has given him. Why was he able to give twice a week? Why was he able to fast? Why was he able to give? Why was he able to do all of these things? By God's grace. Why are we able to do what we are able to do? By God's grace and power. You may think, oh no, I do this myself. Don't be, don't be delusional. Everything we can do or have done is by His power, by His hand, and for His glory. Everything. 
Don't ever take it away from the Lord and think, oh, I'm doing this myself. No. There's not a thing we can do ourselves. Everything is by his grace. Now, this is a stunning statement, again, that Jesus here relates. And again, he shocked the legalist and his audience. And just like today, we have so many that are examples of people who come before the Lord and say, Lord, I thank you that I have this, I thank you for this, I thank you for all these things that I have given you and I have done for you. I haven't done anything. Only when you... See, we have to have and be humble, as did John the Baptist. You know, he too, when the people ask him, he said, I can only do what was given to me from above. That's all we all can do. What's given to us from above. Sometimes we don't like what's given to us. Sometimes we don't like what's, what takes place. But there's always a reason and a purpose of why it happens and why it is even allowed in our life. Maybe to humble us. Maybe it's to reveal to us and to show us that we are not who we are or who we think we are. And maybe it's to put us down a few. You know, it tells us to humble ourselves under God's mighty hand. And I always do this. And you do remember that when Jesus Christ himself came, he himself who came from heaven, what was his attitude? What did he do? And we should have the same attitude. In Philippians chapter 2, and in verse 5 and following, here's what the word of God says. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to grasp, but made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance of a man, he humbled himself. God humbled himself before God. Think about that. Because Jesus was in fact God who came in the flesh and he humbled himself before God. Why? To do what God wanted him to do for us. This is what should be our... See, we're here to help others as well. It's not about us. It's about others as well. And notice he says he humbled himself, and what happened? He became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, what happens? Every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Do you know why you were born? You were born to give glory to God. You were born so that others can see God in you. you know, let's face it, sometimes people do see God in us, and sometimes people see the devil in us. We don't always do what we're supposed to do. And we're thankful that Jesus Christ did die on the cross for us, and that we can go to him and say, Lord, help me when those times when I don't do what I'm supposed to do. And we need to humble ourselves. Again, I go back to what I had said in the beginning. Think of what you were when the Lord saved you. Think of the person you were. And then, always remember, as it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 11, you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God. You see, it's by His power that you are a child of God. It's by His grace, because He died on the cross. You didn't do anything for it. Even your coming was by His power, by His grace, for His glory. You see, if you do anything, then you're taking glory away from God. And, you, and there's nothing there. So you come. Because it's by his power. So think of what you were. We're in the Thanksgiving season, right? 
thank God, not only for your house, for your family, for your friends, and for clothing, and for all the things you have, but thank God for Jesus Christ, whom he sent to die on a cross for your sins. For you see, without your relationship with Jesus Christ, you're not going to get into heaven. I don't care what any other religion says. And you may think, well, that's, that's not right. Yes, it is. Because you see, the Word of God so says, and Jesus even said it, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes unto the Father except through me. Not through baptism, not through communion, not through membership of a church, not because I am a particular church. Do you know the Mormons believe that if you're not a member of their church, that you're not going to get into heaven? And there are other religions like that as well. Well, I'm not telling you that. I'm going to tell you the truth. The way to get into heaven is through Jesus Christ. It's by his death on the cross. And if you know him, then again, be thankful. I don't care what kind of health problems you have, financial problems you have, or whatever you may be going through. Thank the Lord for Jesus Christ. Because if he had not died on the cross and God had not sent him, none of us would have any hope whatsoever. None. None. We would miss it completely. We would never make it in. But because of Jesus Christ. So the question today is, do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Do you know him, not just here, but do you know him in your heart? Have you repented of your sin and have Jesus Christ in your heart? See, it's that simple. That's what he says. For all who are saved, come to me, and I will give you life. You can have eternal life. You know, the word of God is clear. It is crystal clear concerning salvation and what it says concerning that of all who says. When we come to know him, as, as, he, as he so says, all who come to him, I will not cast out. I will not throw away. But all who put faith in Jesus Christ can have eternal life. See, he's, he's done this. Such an awesome God that we have. Not because of anything we have done, all because of what he has done. And it says in the word of God that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, what's going to happen? You will be saved. It's that simple. But have you done that? Do you know him? Well, you can do that today. Come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior today. Let us stand. Almighty God, as we come before you, Lord. Lord, if there's anyone whom you have spoken to and have come, and just as the tax collector was justified, and why was he justified? Because he relied upon your mercy and your grace. And we do the same today. If there's anyone here today that has not, and you are speaking to them, I pray now that they will come and that they will make it public that they, Lord, are accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I pray today they will come unto you and give glory and honor to you as well. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Turn to hymn number 285. And as we so sing, wherever he leads, I go. If he is leading you now, you come as we sing 285.